morning, everyone. We're glad to have you with us. And um, for our third judging practice, this time with Annette Riley, who will be showing us a quick reference guide, and we will be discussing it along with some judging tips. And hopefully you will uh, participate with us. I would like to let you know who Annette is. Um, Annette is a longtime STC member and STC fellow. She has been involved in competitions, STC competitions since the 1980s. Um, she has been the Washington DC Baltimore chapter treasurer for countless years. I'm not sure how many at this point and is a mentor of mine and a lead judge for our competition. And uh, with that, I hand this over to Annette. Well, thank you, Carolyn. And it's great to see you here this evening. Uh, this is the last of the judging practices. And actually our first deadline is only a couple of days away to complete our first impressions. So we have uh, a half an hour, maybe a little more if you can stay uh, to practice. And so what we do tonight will be kind of like what you'd be doing in preparing your first impressions, uh, but guiding us on to the kind of things we think about as we get into actual judging and a full evaluation of the entry, uh, which you probably won't be doing in a half hour, even with a one page sample like we have tonight. Um, just as a reminder, we will be using polls. When one comes up, just click on the uh, choices that you see there. And um, let's see, I'm about to bring up our first poll, but I'd like to switch slides first. Yes, okay. So the first poll should be appearing on your screen. And if you can, just click one of the responses there. Give it another couple seconds. Okay, and there's the results. We have a first time judge or two. We have a person who's attending judges training for the first time. And the rest of us are saying, do I have to do this yet again? But I hope that we get uh, some fresh perspectives as we go through it, thank you. We're going to be talking about what kind of things we're judging, how to review an entry, preparing comments. Maybe we'll say a few words about uh, sample award levels and uh, looking at the sample entry. And especially, I, I thank everybody for judging. We have a good sized group of entries this year, and it's a lot easier when we have enough people involved. Okay. I, um, You've probably seen this. Um, first thing to do when you get an entry is just scan through it and make sure you can access all the entries in your group. See if perchance you have a conflict of interest with any of them that you weren't aware of till you saw it. And uh, that way you know you're, re you're ready to do the judging. Look through the entry form, um, noticing the statement of purpose, any special circumstances such as I had to do this in a week with no help or something like that. Um, browse through the bigger entries. There's no uh, possible way that you're gonna read every word of a huge entry. Uh, let's try out right away using the chat. Does everybody know where to find it? For me, it's a little box that looks like a cartoon caption. And when I click on it, it opens up. Okay. I can see people are in the chat and responding. Um, so what's the largest entry you've ever had to judge if you judged before? Okay, um, not seeing much in the chat about that. 200 pages, okay, it sounds like a good sized book. I. A large book of 400 pages, magazines, 300 pages. Okay, I'm not going to tell you about my four volume set, but it, because it's been from quite a few years ago, they don't, people don't seem to enter the three ring binders the way they used to. 
but we'll um, look at a one page entry now in just a minute. Um, I think that it's possible to finish an evaluation of an entry, um, jotting down notes as you go in an hour. If you're spending more than 90 minutes on an entry, it's because you really enjoy it and want to read every word, even though you don't need to. So, but even so, we've got to get started soon. Okay. Um, what you emphasize, what you look for in the entry depends on the type of entry that you have. You know we're going to be looking at a quick reference guide this evening, so um, you can see that's a user support material. Okay, so the things you look for in a user support material are going to be a little different from some of the other kinds of entries. When we judge, we're looking at it from at least three different perspectives. Uh, we all have two of them, I hope, because being a good technical communicator means we can put ourselves in different points of view. We could be the point of view of the professional communicator. That is, we might be writing and editing something like this ourselves if it's related to the work we do. And we know what kind of things we're concerned about in our own work or uh, what kind of things we're concerned about if we do a, a copy editive or a big reorganization or a fact check. But then also, the person who's using this and the entry form should tell you who they expected to be in their audience and what they expected them to do with the entry. If you're coming at it like that kind of person, I find that uh, when I open up a new piece of software, I may not be the one to read the manual first. and uh, But then when I go back and look at it, do I find what I need? And maybe you're looking at the entry as a technical expert. You know something about the subject. Uh, you can tell if there's a technical error in the content or if they've uh, left out important aspects of the content. Most important thing we're going to be doing is how well the work does what is intended to do. Does the work fulfill its purpose for its audience. <clears throat> and so that's why we look at all these different perspectives. Um, judge the work the contributors actually did. Of course, you have to include the work that other people did to get that entry up on the web page or out the door as a published work. Um, and watching out for reviewer syndrome. This is what little Lola Zook used to refer to when she said, well, I've got this entry and if I don't find something wrong with it, people will think I don't know what I'm doing. So I've got to look through it and pick out the flaws. That's that's not our main goal. Did the work fulfill the purpose that the audience has? OK, um, here's the entry summary. Um, this entry was actually submitted to a contest about oh, six or eight years ago. And it's still out there on the internet under a Creative Commons license, so we are free to use it tonight. It was uh, done in-house, included with purchase software, executed by a person in a week, meant to be laminated and used as a reference while the client user is working with the software. Um, you may be thinking about all these things as we judge it. I'm going to put it up on the screen very briefly here We'll come back to it in a few minutes when we actually start the um, judging practice. And if you uh, downloaded it, you may have a copy that you printed out. I hope you didn't laminate it. Um, and uh, or another one that you can flip to on your screen to see. OK, um, as we look at it, we've got to set the context. Uh, who is the user? OK, uh, what would you say to answer that question? Who's the user? You can copy something right off the entry form or just give me a hint. It's OK if you write this in the chat. OK, um, so the, the user could be, do you think it's somebody who's brand new to LaTeX? Or quick reference usually implies somebody that 
knows it but doesn't use it too often um, and uh, needs to refer to something as a reminder. I mean, something that you're doing every day, you may use a quick reference for something unusual, something that you're using once a week or once a year when you do your taxes, it's a little different. Uh, can I judge the technical content? Okay, I got a poll about that. I'm gonna do another poll here. Okay, Malu, how do I get the second poll? Poll two, that's how I get it. Okay. Okay, with everybody would try poll two in the next 15 seconds. Okay, we're sort of split between people who never heard of latex and uh, we actually have a person who has used it a little. That's great. Um, I'm in this second list. I've heard of latex, but I've never used it. So immediately when you start to judge something that you don't know a whole lot about, you say, <gasps> how am I gonna judge this? I can't tell if it's right or wrong, but you're judging it really for other things. I mean, we've all used I think some kind of markup language, or even if it's only uh, word uh, quick links, uh, you know, control X for something. So you have some basis of understanding how quick reference sheets work and how uh, text markup languages work and uh, how quick references can be designed and used. That's gonna see you through judging this entry. Uh, it does not require that you be a, a latex expert. Okay, can I judge the work as a technical communication? The answer is yes to that one. Okay, we've got a whole bunch of evaluation criteria on that evaluation form that we'll have to fill out. One, two, three, four, five, six, that are gonna apply to everything we judge. And the last three that apply to specific uh, media or types of entries. Um, and then there's a summary. And for each of these, you'll see a bunch of questions that will help you focus on what you want to evaluate. But really, you're going to be writing down strengths and weaknesses that apply to that general area. Uh, you may have judged, if you judged in the past, it was a multi page checklist of yes, no, maybe for each of those questions, and it was pretty time consuming to fill out the form, but it did force you to consider all those different aspects. Okay, thinking about this quick re reference latex entry and the evaluation criteria, which criteria are most significant for the entry? I think we have a poll about that. Uh, let's see. Okay, so if you think about this entry, which criteria would you say is going to be the most important one? I don't see the poll. Okay, I got oh, there it. There it is. Okay, got it. Thank you. So everybody who wants to poll had a chance to enter your choice. Okay. Okay, uh, let me give you how this looks to me. Um, looks like more of us picked layout and presentation and I would have to agree with that because that is a huge factor in whether you can find the information you need quickly, how it's presented. For me, writing and editing, 
um, I can see how you would pick that because it's very important on something short like this where it's supposed to be a definitive, absolutely correct um, piece of material that the um, editing be flawless and there be no errors whatsoever. But you're not writing page after page of uh, help topics. It's not uh, where you have to concentrate on writing so it can be translated into six languages. So uh, for me, I would I would probably not select writing and editing as my top priority, but I can see its importance here. Organization and scope, um, it's important. There's a choices of how you select what to include, even on a one-page document, but not so much as on something more massive. Navigation, what's to navigate on one page? And artwork, um, in this case, there isn't any. So, I mean, there's design elements, yes, but not artwork. So I understand how you got the results. Okay, now is where we uh, do our little practice judging. I'm gonna go back and, and put the uh, sample entry back on the screen. And I'd like you to pick the one factor that you think is most important. And we're gonna spend about three to four minutes with me not saying anything. And I'd like you to jot down some strengths and weaknesses for that specific evaluation criteria. Don't necessarily have to do it for the whole piece, but um, for one criteria that you picked. I like when you finish that, if you didn't do it right in the chat, to uh, cut and paste it into the chat so that we can share our comments about this piece. Okay, and by me, it's 20 past the hour, and we will, or maybe 19, so about 23 past. We'll be back talking again. Okay, the returns are starting to come in. Uh, please feel free to use the chat when you're ready to enter uh, just a brief choice of uh, strength or a weakness.
Okay, a clock is ticking, and we're going to move on at this point. Um, you can see that it's a very much a quick uh, first impression that we're working on here. I'm seeing a number of uh, comments that point out the strengths and also some of the weaknesses. Um, so scroll through the chat while we go on and you can get an impression. It's always reassuring when you're judging and you get together for consensus judging to find out that another judge feels the same thing as you do or reach the same conclusion based on different evidence that they notice something different. Um, so we'll come back to some of these as we go on. This is what you'll do, and, and this is plenty to fill out the first impression sheet. Uh, sh probably should never spend more than half an hour on that unless you get engrossed in the entry and want to read the whole thing the first night. But um, that will get you started. And then uh, as you go through, you'll focus on each of these categories in turn. and. Uh, even if there's something that seems to be not applicable, you have to ask yourself, was there a good reason why they didn't use this um, capability that they could have included in the work? Uh, was it really inappropriate or did they miss a chance to do something there? Okay, so uh, just a couple things to keep in mind when you do your evaluations. Um, suggesting improvements. Uh, there is no one perfect right communication solution for anything. So if you are convinced that the only way to present something is to use uh, Garamond with symbols, and this person uses uh, Cambria and no symbols, uh, you're not gonna like it. It's, it's gonna be hard to judge in that situation. But if you can uh, point out an improvement uh, as one possible solution that might have worked differently without saying, why didn't you, or you should have, uh, then it will work better. Uh, avoid making jokes or by making comments about, you know, uh, the person who did the entry. You want the comments to be something they can show to their boss, even if you're tactfully pointing out that there are many opportunities for improvements in the entries. Um, you're going to be thinking about whether the entry warrants an award, but you're not going to put anything like that on the evaluation form, because if you do, it's inevitable that your group is going to choose a different award level. Uh, so try not to use words like, this is a distinguished entry, or this entry is excellent, uh, when it turns out that it's going to get a merit. So, you know, use some other word like uh, exceptional or outstanding or uh, distinctive rather than those words that go with the specific award levels. Spell check your, your entry form, please. Uh, look over your comments. Um, I like to, I hope everybody comes to the final consensus judging and doesn't talk about the entry before you filled out your own evaluation form because that's the way we capture the, the most useful range of comments for the entrance. And also, you're going to be characterizing your comments as to whether it's something that you know could be fixed, but it doesn't really detract overall from the entry, or uh, something that you may not use the word major flaw right on the evaluation form, something that makes it difficult for the entry to achieve its purpose. Okay, um, I want to show you quickly some other possibilities for how this entry could have been done. Um, we've pointed out some things that uh, could have changed uh, that would help. Uh, it's hard to tell the major from the minor headings. The fonts are mostly just one font and it's hard to pick things out. Um, I noticed a few places where the content under the heading seemed to belong better under a different heading. So there are a lot of uh, possibilities there that might have made it easier to uh, 
to uh, find the information. One thing that some people have suggested in the past, and I, I don't see it on a quick scan here, is maybe you should have used color in the entry uh, to set things off. That is, if you know your uh, users have a color printer or will be using it on, a, on the screen. Um, so I want to show you an entry that took that advice to use color, and here's what they came up with. <gasps> This is definitely not using Carolyn's golden light to uh, <clears throat> present the information. It does have the advantage that you can tell the uh, the code from the meaning of the code because it's in two dis distinct colors. But for legibility, uh, there's a strong contrast. But um, this entry would certainly rouse my prejudice against reverse type in every respect. Here's another one. Um, this is uh, not exactly latex commands, but it's it's uh, similar in that it's a one-page command reference. Notice that this one it doesn't fit our our uh, meeting screen because it's in portrait rather than landscape. But for me, a two-column layout actually makes it a little quicker to find things than the three-column layout. And it's really easy for me on this one to pick out the headings, even if they do use my uh, pet peeve of reversed uh, type, white on dark. I also uh, like the way they very subtly shaded every other row, and that makes it easier for me to pick out particular lines. So I think this one used a lot stronger command of design elements rather than just uh, text on page. Here's another choice. This one is another latex cheat sheet. This one is for the math commands. So it's going into a little more detail. And they got their rainbow palette working, uh, trying all those colors. But um, even so, um, for me, the way that it's aligned and laid out uh, they are able to get quite a bit of information on the page without making it look as cluttered uh, through the use of borders and lines. I don't know if that's something easy to do in latex or if they had to result to other means to make it happen. I'm not the, familiar enough with latex at all to judge that. But it's interesting when you're suggesting possibilities to think, how could it have been done uh, would it have been better, and and which do I like? Now, um, what are the award levels? Um, I'd like to, I didn't put a poll for this, but think about what you might say for this one. It, um, everything that we have coming in, the person considers it professional work, but if it's Average or less than average, it doesn't have to get an award. It has more than a one, maybe several major flaws. Uh, and uh, a merit is going to have a small number of major or minor flaws, but it's acceptable professional work. You wouldn't be embarrassed to submit it to a client. Excellence. Uh, it might have a flaw or two, but it's generally well above the average level. And a distinguish has no major flaws and few, if any, minor flaws. Um, it may not do anything particularly original. It just may do everything it has to do very well. It uh, serves its purpose and meets the needs of its audience. And that's the most important thing it has to do. OK, so when you get to the judging, you know you're judging against those criteria. You only have three entries. You, you, it may work out that you get three distinguished. It may work out, I don't think it will, that you get three and you don't want to give any of them an award. I think that's very unlikely, but it's possible. There's no set percentage that you have to award at any one level. It's acceptable if the entry doesn't get an award. Consider the technical complexity and the amount of achievement of the entry. It, um, I have one entry this time to judge, which is a one-page blog. That's it. 
one page. Um, you know, how does that compare with writing a book or putting together a thousand topic health system? Think about how complex it is. Um, also think how well does the entry fulfill its purpose for its audience? Because that's the most important thing in judging the thing. Okay, we're just about to close. I almost kept it within half an hour and we have a final poll. Uh, let's try this one. Okay, everybody passed the quiz. You are now fully equipped to go out and do great things judging. I hope you enjoy it and uh, look forward to uh, seeing some best of show entries maybe coming from your judging group. Thanks for coming on tonight. We have a little time if you'd like to stay on, if you can, if you have further comments, want to unmute yourself, ask any questions, that's why we're here. Thank you so much, Annette. Yeah, feel free to unmute yourselves. If there's anything you want to contribute before we go or to ask any questions. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Welcome. We have a little chat question um, that perhaps I'll share for Jessica. What if the entry has functionality that doesn't work? For example, a PDF that includes videos, but the videos don't launch. The entrant acknowledges the issue by providing the videos along with the PDF. Um, I, I would be inclined to just accept that the videos don't work in the copy of the entry that was provided for judging, but probably did when it was uh, posted and accessible from the organizational's original website. So I think, um, you know, integrating the videos into the PDF and having a, a working functioning link may not have been possible with the kind of access to the entry that we're getting. It may only work if uh, the entry was able to give you access to their internal site. So I would try to judge it uh, without regard for that lack of functionality there. That's my my take on it. We had one entry that <clears throat> because uh, Adobe, uh, was it Adobe or was it Google that disabled a uh, flash player? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so um, the, the original entry was done with uh, assuming that everybody could access flash. <clears throat> so the entrant uh, also submitted a USB. So they ask judges to uh, look at the videos using the, the flash drive rather than using it from the PDF link. But I don't know if uh, you're referring to the same same one. Um, who was the one who asked the question? Jessica. Jessica. Jessica? Okay. So Jessica, if you didn't get the USB, it could be, uh, you may be uh, looking at a different uh, entry, but but there was one entry that provided us the flash drive because of the the issues that uh, Adobe uh, Adobe's flash player was not uh, deployed across different browsers anymore. So unless you download Flash, you couldn't see it. Okay. Anything else? All right, with that, I think we're ready to conclude and uh, let's all rush out and get started on our first impression forms. And so we'll be all ready to meet Saturday's deadline with those on the 12th. <clears throat> Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank this you so much. Thanks Annette. again. Thank right. you. You're welcome. Thank you, Annette. You're Good welcome. night. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.